I have been using the new version of Final Cut Pro for the iPad and Final Cut Camera for about a week now. I have been all in on Final Cut Pro for the iPad since day one. I use it to edit all of my videos and even my podcast comfort zone. So every time it gets an update, I get a bit excited. In the past, updates have been focused on both capturing and editing features. But this time, all of the new features are about the edit and I am really excited. So let's get into what's new. First up, there is a new auto color correct tool. If you're familiar with Final Cut Pro on the Mac, you've probably seen this before, but it's this magic wand icon and you can use it with SDR, HDR, log and raw footage. So basically the whole gambit. In the color adjustment effect, there are two sections. There's a light section and a color section, and there is a magic wand for both of these. You can click these independently, and then what will happen is it uses a machine learning model based on a whole bunch of previous color grades and all sorts of really complex stuff. It goes in, analyzes your footage, and color grades it for you automatically. Now, for the most part, this does a really good job. I found it got really close. It wasn't ever perfect, and I tested this on a bunch of different footage, indoor, outdoor, stuff shot on my Canon camera, stuff shot on my iPhone, and it always got 90% of the way there. Uh, for example, when I did it to my talking head shot, this shot that you see right here, me sitting at my desk, it looked decent, but it was a little washed out. So I had to bump up the contrast a little bit. One of the best features in Final Cut Pro for the iPad is the live drawing feature. This is where you can take your Apple Pencil and you can draw right on top of your footage and it animates it in as a separate layer. You can control the timing and do all sorts of different stuff. Apple added support for some new brushes watercolor, crown, fountain pen, and monoline inks. I've been playing around with these and I really like them. I wish I was a lot more artistic and could really take advantage of this feature. I just can't draw. I'm not very good at that. Uh, but I have been using this tool more and more. You've probably seen it in some past videos to highlight certain features and to call things out in my edits. One thing that really did impress me is when I saw a demo of these features is it was this rally car that was driving through the dirt track. And what the person did is they actually used the watercolor brush to highlight the dirt that was coming out behind the rally car. It was a really nice touch. There are also some new effects in here as well. There is a picture in picture style effect and a call out effect. Now the build that I have, the, this is an early build of through test flight. It doesn't have these effects in here. So I haven't been able to use them personally, but I did get to see a demo of them and they worked really well. They, I, I like them. I'm excited to try them because these are actually things I think I would use in my videos. There's also a few new color grade presets and some new music tracks as well. And if you've ever used the music tracks in the iPad version, you'll know how great they are because they aren't just limited music tracks to where, uh, you know, if it's a two minute and 38 second song, you have to like edit around that and like either get it to end early or duplicate it and try and get it to splice it together and make like this, like, like one seamless, really long music track. With Final Cut Pro for the iPad, you can actually take music tracks and you can shrink them down to a minute or scrub them up to 10 minutes or an hour or whatever. And it'll actually recompile that track for you in your edit and it's seamless the whole way through. Really nice touch. If you're somebody that uses the Apple Pencil while editing, there's actually now haptic feedback in the Apple Pencil. And this is a really nice touch. So when you're scrubbing through the timeline, you kind of feel the Apple Pencil vibrate. When you're dragging effects down or clips down, you can feel it vibrate. But the weird thing is, is it's kind of limited. It's limited to just the stuff that I said. The thing that really surprised me is like if you have like a, a scrub wheel or, or like a effect that like you would kind of like scrub through to increase or decrease like the intensity of it. There's no haptics for that. So I, that, that kind of surprised me a little bit. But ultimately, it's just kind of one of those things that's a nice touch, but isn't going to ultimately make your edits better. But what will make your edits better are some workflow improvements. Now, none of these are massive they're not they're not uh, world shattering okay this is going to make a huge difference for editors but for some people out there they could probably be really big deals 
So you can now expand the timeline vertically. This way you can make your clips really tall. So if you're editing based on waveforms or you really want to see like a big thumbnail preview of that clip, you can expand it and make the clips a lot taller. The picture in picture window is now dynamically adjustable, meaning you can shrink or enlarge it anywhere you want on the canvas. What it doesn't do is it doesn't leave the final cut window. So if you're using stage manager, it doesn't go out of the final cut window. Or if you're using an external monitor, it doesn't go out of the final cut window, which is kind of a bummer because I thought this would be the feature that made final cut on an external monitor work a little bit better because right now on an external monitor, Final Cut Pro for the iPad is still limited to that four by three window. You can't expand it to a 16 by nine window. Your timelines can now support high frame rate clips beyond 60 frames per second. It now goes up to 90, 100, or even 120 frames per second. There are also a couple of new keyboard shortcuts as well. Uh, there's options to delete clips entirely from the project, not just from the timeline, but you can remove it completely from the project. Plus there's now a keyboard shortcut for taking your timeline and rendering it in the background. This isn't the export feature, but this is just the background rendering feature. And just a reminder, if you wanna see all the keyboard shortcuts, including these, just hold down the command key on the keyboard. So that's Final Cut Pro for the iPad. Excited about the update, still some ways to go, but let's switch gears and talk about Final Cut Camera. This was introduced earlier this year uh, as kind of a way to work really closely with Final Cut Pro for the iPad, ability to do multi-cam and sync it all up and you can control it all right from the iPad. It's, it's a really well thought out app and it got some really nice features. So first off, there is now LUT previewing when filming, but... It's just the Apple log LUT. It's no third party LUTs are supported, just the Apple log LUT. So basically you're just previewing what this footage is gonna look like if you use the Apple log LUT. Speaking of log though, you can now capture log footage in HEVC format. You no longer have to use ProRes. This will save people a ton of space. When I'm filming with my Canon camera, which I'm doing right now, I use HEVC log. I don't use ProRes, I don't use RAW. I just use HEVC, it saves so much space. It's a lot easier to edit with. This is a really good, good feature added. And there's also better level tools when setting up Final Cut Pro camera. It supports both a new roll and tilt level so you can make sure you're properly level when putting it on a tripod. And there is a top-down level as well, which is really nice. I do a lot of top-down shooting. Uh, it's just out of frame right here, but it's this guy right around here. You've seen it in other videos. And then lastly, if you have a iPhone 16 Pro line phone, uh, you can capture up to 120 frames per second video now. So that's it. Those are the updates to Final Cut Pro for the iPad and Final Cut Camera. I want to hear your thoughts. What's your favorite update in these releases? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.